I have spoken um, on COVID on movement disorders. Um, obviously, COVID is a, well, SARS-CoV-2 is a complex virus and it can manifest um, with in a systemic way, affecting various organs, including the lungs and the kidneys and the brain. And in the brain, it has various manifestations in the acute phase, uh, which include the uh, characteristic uh, change of the taste of smell and um, uh, the change of taste and smell. Then there is um, cerebral vascular disease uh, with uh, strokes and bleedings. There's headaches, um, there are seizures, and then there are reports about movement disorders. And uh, within the movement disorder spectrum, basically you can see the full spectrum from the phenomenology point of view, which include hypo and hyperkinetic disorders. And of all the acute um, movement disorders that you see, um, myoclonus is by far the most common manifestation. Um, and this can either manifest as uh, pure or isolated myoclonus or in combination with other features, in particular brainstem signs and ataxia, as well as other features that have been described in various case reports. Um, altogether, there are about uh, 50 to 60 cases in the literature which have been published, either as single case reports or as small case series. The uh, myoclonus can either be um, spontaneous or action-induced. It can be mostly positive and sometimes negative myoclonus. Um, it's often um, stimulus-sensitive, and it's uh, probably cortical or subcortical um, with regards to its origin. Um, it responds to either symptomatic treatment. Um, others have used um, immunotherapies, uh, including IVIG, steroids, or plasma exchange, and it tends to um, improve, fortunately, after um, a few days or weeks, generally. We have to sort of uh, look at this in, from two angles. The other is the acute manifestations, which happens during the acute phase of the infection. And then there is uh, post-acute manifestations. And there's concern um, in the literature that um, you may see um, long-term neurodegeneration. And this um, concern is mostly based on historical observations from the early 20th century, um, where the Spanish flu um, was followed by a wave of um, post-encephalic Parkinsonism and the encephalitis lethargica. Um, there's still a strong um, discussion about whether there's a causal link between the H1N1 influenza virus and the observation of the encephalitis lethargica and the post-encephalitic Parkinsonism. Andrew Lees at the MDS gave a, a beautiful historical talk about this. Um, but um, given this historical observation, um, one wonders whether we may see a um, sort of a subsequent wave of neurodegeneration as a long-term um, sequelae. And this may be due to a hit and run mechanism where the virus serves as a trigger and then um, sets off a neurodegenerative process. And then only years from now, we may see the clinical manifestations. And by then, if you look for the virus, the virus is difficult to find because it's already gone. And that's what we call the hit and run mechanism. So as a, a double hit hypothesis, really.